Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We are in Atlantic Beach doing a follow-up on the DeHart project. And we are on one of those absolutely glorious Florida sunshiny days. So we're gonna take a real quick overview of what we accomplished here. And everybody is talking about it on the streets, or so I've heard from Ms. Ms. DeHart. So uh, I'm gonna, off to my right, we're gonna start down here. We didn't have any, any plantings outside of the fence. Technically, the property line is the fence. And the city of Atlantic Beach gave us a little bit of guff because we have rock that's in the right of way. But we worked with the city on this and they, we got a resolution and we compromised and it, I think it looks just fine the way it turned out. So down on this far end, we did some hibiscus. We've got some bulbine. And then we did some jasmine, which if we go inside by the pool, you'll understand what we're trying to do because her swimming pool is just a matter of a few feet off of the street and that will screen her pool for her. We added Sylvester palms to my right, to my left. They are staked and those stakes will stay in place through the hurricane season this year. So probably into late November before we take those off. We've done some rock beds this was the big sticking point with the city. And if you look real closely, we have grass here. This bed originally went out to the street. City poo-pooed that whole idea. And, and so we ended up having to put turf here, but they let us keep the rest of the rock. So I was grateful for that. We've got some shishi camellias, which will give us some winter color. And if John doesn't get hit by the backing up car, we'll be okay. So, got shishis, foxtail, some blue days, hibiscus, and bulbine. And that's kind of the, the, the crux of the planting. I am on a boardwalk walkway. In Atlantic Beach, because of the coverage issues, you can't always use pavers. So in this case, they allow treks type decking for walkways, and they consider it permeable. So you can see it. It's a beautiful color and it's a very nice warm brown and I think it, it looks really pretty out here. We then did a handrail because also part of the drainage issues when this house was built, the city mandated that we have holding areas for water. So you'll see these big, we call them divots, in the yard. And the problem with the divots is they, they make it a little bit difficult to walk in your yard. So we added the walkway over this and then we've got cabling so it doesn't obscure the view, particularly near the intersection out here. So the city appreciated that. And we've tied this all in so that it works up to the front door. Uh, Mr. Hart's mom has to walk up this and it's we didn't want any steps per se other than the smaller step at the landing. So we tried to do this walkway without any steps. So it's a bit of a ramp, but for their purposes, it works really well. So I'm gonna walk around to the side driveway and show you some more things we did. So this is what we were terming the bridge. And this goes across one of the holding divots. And it's approximately a foot and a half above the holding divot. Because this is permeable, the city allows you to build this over top of the divot because the water will still go through this. One of the cool features of this is it's got lighting strips along the handles so that at night you can see this in the dark if you're trying to cut across. And the reason why she would use this is she goes from the driveway around to the front door at times. So that's the safety, safety benefit of this, this bridge. We did a planting bed here that we've added a couple orange birds and then some more bulbine and some rock. Originally, I believe she had some ground cover and it was just one, one plain thing. So this, this complements the, the handrail that's over at the front door and it's not so impactful that cars can't see it when they're traveling through the intersection here. We get bit, Back to the back here, we had intended on doing grid, grid pavers for the parking strips. Uh, the city kind of nixed us on that one. 
and we ended up changing. There was very small gravel here and they were having problems with the gravel just kicking into the garage and also with the with the, the the small gravel it was walking all over out onto the street and whatnot so we went to a larger granite and that seems to be doing much better for her oh she got the blind down cool 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 So we're in the backyard now and we've added some plants in a pot. I've got firebush and then some verbena along with the matchsticks. Matchsticks have been blooming this winter and then they will bloom into the early spring and then they'll go quiet during the summer. We transplanted a couple shrimp plants back here and she has some blue days. But the jasmine, which you can kind of just see, it's just only been in several weeks now, will cover this, this fenced panel area and you won't be able to see the street from here and they won't be able to see you in here. But another thing that we did, and it, it's kind of cool, is we did a big shade at the end of the porch. And so from a privacy standpoint, we couldn't really put plants out there and we didn't want to build anything that you couldn't move. So when she wants to be able to look out there, she can raise the blind. And then this screens everybody from seeing you from the street. So it's, it's, it's not a real expensive project, but it definitely is something that gives you an answer to a tough situation. So as I say, this yard has now become flamingo worthy. I thank you for stopping by and we'll see you at the next one. Thank you.